Okay, everybody. So uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good welcome wherever you are in the world. Um, welcome to Friday, the 20th of January's version of Harmonize to Energize. No, I just want something. Did you mute yourself? Do, 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 do. Or I will. <laughs> it's not a thread, it's a promise. <laughs> uh, welcome to Harmonize to Energize. My name is Terry Matthews. I've been practicing the art of Jin Shin Jitsu since um, 1989, 20 years of which I worked at the main headquarters, which was in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's my delight to share self-help um, that I've learned and I've experienced over the years. And I've had the good fortune to study with, I think pretty much all the Jin Shin Jitsu instructors. And we were blessed and it was a privilege to Bring Muriel Carlton um, last week, and um, I'm putting my hands together that she will do a return visit. Um, if you're here, Muriel, forgive me, but um, <laughs> you did say you didn't complete. You had more to say, right? <laughs> so uh, it's at some time in the future, perhaps. So for the new people, um, Jin Shin Jitsu is an art of harmonizing life energy or it's um, often called in the Asian healing modalities, chi or ki. And we harmonize that by placing our palms of our hands, back of our hands, thumbs, on what we call safety energy locks, which are 26 of them left and right of the spine and in the arms. These energy locks are like locks in a canal. Uh, we can um, regulate how the energy moves. If it's stuck in an area, we can place our hands on that energy lock to allow the energy to move more congruently. If energy is not moving, it's stuck. And if it's stuck, there's often pain. And Jin Shin Jitsu has been proven to be a very simple remedy for many, many labels. Um, our teacher, my teacher, Mary Burmeister, preferred to call any disharmony a project. She really didn't like to get into the words because a lot of them invite people's anxiety and fear. They've read a lot about this label, that label, oh dear, am I gonna be you know, going through a lot of discomfort or not? Breathe out is, is the key with Jen Shin Jitsu because our mind is capable of creating all kinds of uh, scenarios which are often not true. Uh, our imagination can run haywire and then hundreds of other people will tell us this or that. Our job is to come back to this in the center, the oneness, when the left and the right sides of the body, the exhale and the inhale, are more balanced. I give great honor and thanks to Mary Burmeister who brought Jin Shin Jitsu to the West many moons ago, back in the 70s, after being taught by her master, Master Jiro Marai. And she wrote um, from her notes, which she also um, connected with um, her studies of things like numerology, astrology, this, that, and the other, but not in, in such an intense way, but she really embraced a broad avenue of thinking around what I would call holistic or wholeness in relation to understanding the human energy field. So she was quite the master. I had the privilege of meeting her. I never, um, Jiro Marai passed in, I think it was the early 70s, and I never actually met um, his other disciple, Haruki Kato, but I did meet his son, Sadaki Kato. And between these teachings, we have a way of embracing and harmonizing our energy field with our hands, fingers, toes, and well, I'll say this now, some people haven't got certain limbs. The energy field is there as well. So if that is the case and you're working on self-help by yourself and you don't have either arm, you use your mind, you put it to work, you imagine or you intend for the energy to move from the energy locks that you know. 
It's not something we talk about a lot, but people do ask me from time to time. You can use your mind, stop it from chattering and get it to focus on the energy locks that you want to facilitate. So I hope you're all feeling well. Um, I hope you've had a good week. And um, like I said earlier, it was quite an honor and a privilege to have um, Muriel with us. Such a lot of wisdom. And you know, some people think as we move on in our journey in life, we might not have the, the same amount of passion or imagination, this, that, and the other. I hope um, you got as much as I got out of listening to Muriel. She has great wisdom. And um, I think we should honor that in all our crones, if you want to put it that way. Um, they have garnered, gathered, experienced, and Muriel in particular, along with Philomena Dooley, Wayne Hackett, <clears throat> were the earliest, well, the, the, the first instructors that Mary taught. So again, it was an honor and a privilege. All right, let's breathe out. Let's sit up straight. So new folk and those that have forgotten, we always work with the exhale with Jin Shin Jitsu first, which is correlated with the left side of the body. It's the first, if you like, channel with which energy or the pulse moves from the universe through us. And then we inhale through the right. So there's this movement left to right. And we do whole body facilitation of the energy or the big breath of life through using the little breath of life, the lung. And we allow energy to move from the back of the head, the safety engine lock four, the window that lets in more light, down through the hip line, the 15s, to the big toes, the sevens and beyond to the earth. And then as we inhale, we receive a, a breath of energy, cosmic purified energy, that moves up the back, back through the same areas from the big toe to the hip line, 15 and two back to four. And that's a whole body breath. And if you just practice that alone, I guarantee you're on the journey to harmonizing the you, me. Because as we harmonize, we have a corresponding effect on the environment around us. Um, the simplest form of Jin Shin Jitsu is the breath. And I like to subdivide it into the 36 breaths, which is something that Mary um, initiated, this idea of four sets of nine exhalation inhalations. And ooh, what's going on with my screen? That's very odd. Hmm. Sorry about this, folks. Someone somewhere is trying to blank me out. <laughs> what's going on here? That's interesting. Well, it looks as though we have got some light moving in here really powerfully. Hmm. What are you seeing your end? Anybody? Terry, we see that you're enlightened. Yeah, yeah you, look in, you look enlightened and there's light all around. Just your image, just the colors and your image and everything else is very light except oh, there you, go. Go. Oh. There you, you just traveled to another dimension. <laughs> Yeah, it could have been my internet, but I was looking at the bars and they look pretty good. Uh, it, that's interesting. And it's nothing, you know, in particular about me. We're in a field here. You're all in the field as well. So one of you could have initiated that. Um, I have noticed that you may have noticed that when you do energy work and you're in front of the computer, which is basically working through facilitating electricity, you can you can get these reactions. Um, Anyway, so those of you that watch the replay, <laughs> just remember that. So where am I? Where was we? Where? Who are we? Um, where do we go from here? All right, so we're still in the constellation of Capricorn, which is correlated with the umbilicus flow, which is a six-step flow, which is a facilitator of energy moving up, even though it moves down. Energy moves down as it allows energy to go down, or as energy goes down, it allows energy to go up. And we're moving, like tomorrow, into Aquarius, 
which is correlated with the gallbladder. Those of you that have studied Jin Shin Jitsu will know from various charts that on the main central, as we go to the pubic bone, that correlates with the sixth depth energy, all right, as we move down the front of the body, that correlates with that primordial fire on the exhale. And you know that when you place the hand on the coccyx to move the energy up, that correlates with third depth, the coccyx. And that understanding comes from the order of the creation where the kidney moves into sixth depth primordial fire to refuel. And then the sixth depth moves to third depth. There's a bridge, a bridge from fourth depth to sixth, and then from sixth to third. And at that point, the <clears throat> essential blood essence or chi or ki, third depth, begins its journey of creating all the other organs. And it doesn't actually form itself until it's gone all the way through every other organ, starting with lung and large intestine, which correlates with Aries and Taurus. So what we have here is actually the unmanifest at work initially as six step, which is the body becoming more manifest, but it's essentially unmanifest, moving to something which will become manifest, third depth, but doesn't become manifest until it's created all the other organ function energy. Are you still with me? Um, raise your hand or don't. <clears throat> so my idea for this hour is for us to experience how the main central moves to third depth through the movement of the energy down the front to the pube. And then as it transfers bridges to third depth through the coccyx, and then to experience how that feels when you use the helper, the first step of the umbilicus flow, and the first step of the gallbladder flow. And observe if you feel a difference as the more unmanifest energy becomes more manifest. And it may give you some clues about where you may have some blocks as the energy is wanting to become more manifest. And the thing about the third depth is it also correlates with the ability to give and receive the blood essence, the chi, the key to everything. And it's, it's the great harmonizer. It correlates with mediator if it is in harmony. However, as we may have noticed today, there's a lot of frustration in the air, a lot of anger, and that's a disharmonized third depth. And that's where we can look at flows that are correlated with third depth, like the liver and the gallbladder, and underpinning that, the mediator. So, Sixth depth is just that primordial fire that gives us the passion, the power to simply be who we are. Then we begin the journey through the organ functions and all its corresponding harmonizers or not. Still with me? Good. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> for those of you that have studied Jin Chin or those of you that are about to or want to or might do, I'm going to recommend, and I'm not particularly wanting to sell you a story here, but Mary wrote uh, three self-help books, one, two, and three. They really do give you the foundation to practice Jin Shin Jitsu. That's how I began Jin Shin Jitsu for three years, just practicing self-help. And today we're going to look at a page in self-help book two. In fact, uh, page 10. Well, page nine and 10. And anyone who hasn't wants to, the touch of healing also will give you a broad overview of self-help as well as an understanding of some of the terms that some people tell me they still don't understand, the depths. The depths, by the way, are in my understanding, different dimensions of consciousness. 
different frequencies and vibrations of energy. If none of these, these books appeal to you, Walter Rodriguez Krauser did us a favor and she put them all in card form. And uh, you, know, you can get cards and it's actually a very useful um, and sometimes very efficient way of learning Jin Shin Jitsu because it's uh, compact. It's just like um, we have a, a small book that simply flows for those of you that have studied Jin Shin Jitsu as a practitioner. It compresses it all into a manageable space um, and we can pluck it in our back pocket or whatever. So anyway, that's the, um, that's the promotion over. <laughs> you can go to the uh, Jin Shin Jitsu website. I think I put it in um, uh, the uh, chat room and you can go and have a look there and um, David, uh, David Burmeister will send you um, the information. You can also, or, or the books, you can also download um, eBooks now on Amazon. So that's another thing to think about. Oh, this is different. I don't usually start this way, do I? <laughs> anyway, I'm just letting me go. All right. So we like to keep the spine as straight as possible because that's where that primordial fire likes to move up and down energy centers, which some people understand uh, and call chakras. Mary didn't call them that. And she included centers which conventionally in those studies are not used. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we're not going to do all of them anyway. What we're going to do is the first two steps of the main central down the front to the pubic bone, which is like a middle 15, if you will, and then up the back, the coccyx. Um, for new people, let me see if I have got the main central anywhere so I can show you. Yeah, there it is. Um, <clears throat> We're going to start actually with the right hand on top of the head or the back of the head on the fours, as I mentioned at the beginning. And then the um, left hand is going to go on the pubic bone here. And then it's going to go here on the coccyx. Harry, your screen is blank. Oh, I can see it. Is, is it blank for everybody? Yep. Yep. Now it's there. You're getting the now left side. Okay. Bravo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there seems to be a pause. It gives us time to breathe out, doesn't it? Okay, so yeah, here we go again with the light. So I wonder what's happening here. It could be the signal. Okay, breathe out, everybody. Here you go. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So let's begin. We're sitting up straight. If you need to lay down, go right ahead. If you need to stand up, go left ahead. No, go right ahead. <clears throat> We're going to place our right hand either on the top of the head or on the fours, the back of the head, whichever is more comfortable. Left hand going on the middle 15 or the pew. This is going to facilitate the movement of energy down the front. Six depth. We are moving the primordial fire down all the levels on the exhale. We're going to close our eyes if we can. We're going to stun our cell phones, um, ask our cats and dogs not to make too much noise, and relax. Just drop your shoulders. If the smile comes, Allow it and just let go. Let your mind switch into relaxation mode and allow the energy of the big breath of life to move down the front of your body to the pubic bone. You know? And as most people are familiar with, with me at least, we're going to do this just for nine breaths. And a breath is one exhalation and inhalation. Muriel introduced something which I may have heard before, but I didn't remember. That if it helps, you can count 
maybe eight, one to eight as you move the energy down or as the energy moves down and one to four or six as it goes up. If that helps you, go right ahead. Here we go. We're gonna do it for nine exhalation inhalations. Breathing out. And for those of you that are new, we are waiting to feel the connection between our right and left hands. And it feels like a pulse that you would feel on the radial artery. If you don't feel it, it doesn't matter. Just continually breathe out and receive the breath. The more we let go, the more space we have to receive a breath. And eventually, you'll feel the pulse. And as I say, even if it's not going to happen in nine exhalation inhalations, when you're by yourself, you just do it for longer. So this is mimicking what the umbilicus does at the more unmanifest level. It's moving energy down in order to allow it to go up. Mimicking. And Capricorn for the astrologers can represent the goat moving up the mountain to the highest peaks of consciousness. And when you reach that ninth exhalation inhalation, you may feel a little pulsation at the cube and a little pulsation at the occiput, which is section four. Great. And if you don't, don't panic. It's on the way. And just notice how you feel. Notice if as you were breathing out, maybe, maybe, there were some obstructions down the front of the body. Maybe. Just be aware of it. The breath will eventually move those obstructions. And of course, those of you that are familiar with the full main central can go to wherever those obstructions seem to be and place your left hand there. Okay, let's move to third depth. Let's bridge. Let's go across the bridge from sixth depth to the coccyx. Right hand goes down to the coccyx. <clears throat> and we're moving into the order of creation now. Sixth depth, handing the baton, if you like, to third depth. 
to begin to create all the organ functions in the body before coming back to sixth depth and creating itself. Here we go. Nine exhalation inhalations. And even though the directionality here is down the front of the pube and up the back from the coccyx, feel your connection with the big toe region, the connection to the earth. This is your ground. Energy needs to go to ground so that you can manifest your dreams, your visions. And third depth, is connected to vision, sight. So we're moving the energy into a more manifest zone now. It's still primarily unmanifest, but it's becoming more manifest. So feeling that connection with your toes after the ninth exhalation, inhalation, slip into a neutral zone and just observe. You have <clears throat> whatever experience is unique to you. It's not right or left or wrong. It just simply is. However, if you can feel the energy here around the pube and the coccyx, it's a good thing. This represents at one level the pump. That primordial energy is being pumped up the back. Whoops.
You can still hear me. It's just gone blank my end. <laughs> you can probably see me as well. Yeah, we hear and see you. Yep, perfect. So now we're going to move to the more manifested aspect of the sixth depth and the third depth. And we'll begin with the first step of the left umbilicus function flow, not the self-help, the first step of the flow as written in um, textbook two. And that is left on the right forehead 20 and right on the left 19. 19 for the new people is here in the elbow joint between the two tendons. Let's find a little spot there, a perch. And we're just going to hold the hands in these safety energy locks and do our nine exhalation inhalations and see how we feel. Here we go. And relax your elbow and your arm as much as possible. No straining necessary. Ooh. And as you reach the ninth exhalation inhalation, you can either stay holding this position for a little bit, or you can just relax, put your hands in your lap. And how did that feel? Did you notice any difference between right hand here, left hand cube, and then this what was the difference if there was maybe it's going to shed some light on the role of the umbilicus oh 
I did feel energy from the pube when I did that. How interesting is that? And then I felt it in the coccyx, maybe. Or not. Just observe. That umbilicus is that helper, along with diaphragm, to facilitate the movement of primordial fire down the front and up the back. So then <clears throat> when the liver energy back there, when we were doing the pube and the coccyx, has moved around and created all the other organ function energies, it goes back into sixth depth. And then about 12 midnight, sixth depth feeds and creates with third depth, the organ functions of third depth. And the first one it creates is the gallbladder. And uh, that correlates with Aquarius, the sign of Aquarius, which will begin Saturday or Sunday, this Saturday or Sunday. The water bearer, sprinkling the wisdom to everybody. Um, it's not a water sign, it's actually an air sign, but it's known as the water bearer. Gallbladder itself is sometimes correlated with decision making or lack of decision making. Well, Aquarius is understood to be that higher mind aspect of the intellect. Um, the ability to see the big picture in a very inclusive way. It's all about not just me, it's about thinking of we. And so the gallbladder can help us break down our thinking, our confused thinking generally, and the water bearer will cleanse it by breathing through that confusion using the big breath of light or life. So we're gonna do the first step of the gallbladder flow. And this time we're gonna do the right flow because we're, we're mirroring the down the front, up the back, and right flows tend to encourage the inhale, even though the gallbladder is in fact a descending flow. So <clears throat> the right flow, the right goes on the right, safety engine lock 12, and the left on the opposite forehead. We were over here before, we're gonna go here now. And just sit up straight, exhale. Nine exhalation, inhalations, holding these safety energy locks. Your metabolic rate may be different from mine. You may complete the circulation of nine exhalation inhalations quicker or slower. Not a problem.
And when you come to that ninth exhalation, inhalation, and you stay like this and settle into the rhythm or hands down into the pubic area. And again, just observe how you feel, where you feel. Did you notice a difference between you working and placing your hands at the energy locks that facilitate the more unmanifest in comparison to the more manifest? I know Mary always used to say, no competing, no comparing. What we're doing here is just noticing, observing, witnessing. And maybe we can use these flows in tandem. So if we're looking at a six step project, we may want to use a combination of the main central and the umbilicus. And if we're looking at a third depth project, we may want to put our hands on our coccyx in our pube and also use a gallbladder and then later on the liver as, it, as we move through the seasons into Pisces, <clears throat> constellation of Pisces. So, how was that? Hmm. So I want to just mention again what I consider important factors when we practice Jin Shin Jitsu, whether it's on ourselves or others. This sense of being grounded, really feeling the connection between us and Mother Nature, heaven the head, earth the feet, really connect. Because often, when there's disharmony, there's a disconnect. And that disconnect on the, the big picture can be from the Aquarian head right down to the, the feet there, the higher mind. And we lose the ability to discern, which gallbladder helps us do, by the way, break things down. So consider that in any situation you're in, Maybe before you make a decision, check in to see how grounded you are. Where are you connecting? At what level are you connecting? And as importantly, do not, or at least if you can, avoid a heart bypass because the energy is going down the front. And this central energy lock here, the middle 13, is your heart energy. And we are talking about harmony and compassion in Jin Shin Jitsu. If we go directly and we leave the ladder, the stairway, without even touching it or even connecting to it, it can feel a little cold. Did you notice when you did this to this that it felt okay or did you feel there was something missing? I generally don't do the quickies until I've made sure all the energy centers down the front are clear. And over a period of time, you may instinctively know that your frontal centers are clear. So doing this is no big deal. But remember, we're bringing heaven to earth. And the heavenly realms speak in harmony, not disharmony. And we bring that harmony through our compassion down through all the other centers to earth. So listen to your heart. What are you feeling? That normally precedes what you're thinking. And if you make a decision on an impulse, which is frustration rather than discernment, 
you'll enter the arena of disharmony. So I don't know if that helps some people as we move from Capricorn umbilicus to Aquarius um, <clears throat> gallbladder to really connect with your thought processes through the centers, bearing in mind the movement through the heart down there. We got, oh, hello. <laughs> Can you still see me? Yeah. Okay, good. The, uh, the pixies are up to something on my screen. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, that, that is a triad, head, heart, and feet there. And it correlates with how we can move from the primal fire to the essence of third depth to make decisions to create harmony in our lives. All right. Okay, at this point in time, I can't see any of you, but it doesn't matter. Is there anybody out there who has a birthday? I do. Who's that? Mark. Oh, Mark. Okay, many happy returns of the day, Mark. Yeah, I birthday on Tuesday. Did you? I know, coming up. Oh, and here I am again, <laughs> just in time. <laughs> All right, Mark. Do you want to uh, do you want to join me? I yeah, I could you. say something. Yeah, let's find you. Did it? Did it? Did it? There you are. So, hello. And yeah, let's see if I can move that out of the way. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Mark, any happy returns next week? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we like to offer. Blessings for your birthday, right? Are you up for that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I feel as though you sounded as though you wanted to say something, yeah? Well, yeah. Um, something that struck me, I heard this, uh, another definition for uh, third depth uh, in the, on the emotional level. And I think it could be for liver or gallbladder, but, um, and it's kind of, it's a very common, very family favorite of ours is the, of course, it's frustration, anger. Uh, but one that I've learned recently is called the fear the right thing won't happen. And I thought that's appropriate for a lot of, a lot of all of humans. It's just the fear the right thing won't happen. Hmm. That goes along with this third depth world emotions. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a pretty valid. Is that something that you've just intuited or you've you've put together through your own study? I, it it came from somewhere. I, I it's been a while. I can't remember, but it just came up. It may have been in a Jin Shin Jitsu class. I'm I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but maybe. Yeah, I mean, I like to feel if we've made that connection with our spinal centers before we come into third depth, that's our foundation. And we can trust that primal fire to guide us more effectively if we allow it. Did, did you or anyone feel as you switched to umbilicus and gallbladder, did you feel that there was a vibration for the umbilicus around the pube area and then with gallbladder, did you feel it around the coccyx or no? Well, I felt it more on the umbilicus hold. Yeah. But it's good to remember that in the... I forget, I think it may be in book one of the, you know, the practitioner's manual that Jiro shows that there's different depths on the center line, on the main central. Sure. And it's important to know that third depth really connects well with the sacrum and the coccyx. Absolutely. Yeah, it's not just the coccyx, folks. It's the sacrum and actually the gallbladder goes through L4, 5 yeah. on the sacrum, yeah. So and yeah. you might note that so many uh, back surgeries, I think maybe the most common is around L4, L5. And that's where the gallbladder yeah. takes a dip yeah. and goes into there and comes back out and goes through the hip. But 
I think it's because of our culture is so hurry, hurry, go, go, more, more. And that kind of, you know, develops frustration. Sure. Just too much going on. Yeah. So what Mary suggests is to simplify. Right. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, again, certainly from the perspective of the movement of energy from sixth depth to um, third depth, Go back to the unmanifest. When, when you're going into frustration mode, exhale, let it go, and connect. Maybe those three centers that I mentioned, the head, the heart, and the feet, you could do that. That's how I visualize when I'm going from sixth depth to third depth and then third back to sixth. Just bring yourself back and feel the ground beneath you and the compassion within you. Then consider making your decision or not. I think sometimes we think we have to make a decision in that moment. I don't agree. And someone once said to me, if it's a difficult decision, give yourself three days. I kind of tried that for fun. It did make a difference, actually. Yeah. <laughs> On the third day, <laughs> yeah. the decision was made. So thank you, Mark. You're now, if you would like, to be a recipient, you've got five minutes at least, of a blessing from everybody. Is that something you would be happy to sure. receive? Sure, I would like that. It would be helpful. Yeah. Okay, yeah, everybody. One more thing. I want to add one more thing before we start that is that we too often forget, that, you know, Jiro's wise words and how profound they are, but the simple act of dropping the shoulders and being the smile is a tremendous healing, self-healing act, and then enables us to be more clear to help others too. So it's an incredible phrase, uh, drop the shoulders and be the smile. One time I finished a note to Mary and I said, drop the shoulders. I said, breathe the smile. And she wrote back, she really liked breathe the smile. Yeah, 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 I like it, I like it. <laughs> and the smile is so, prevalent throughout so much of the Eastern culture is a, a mode of healing power or direction. So I'll leave it at that. Perfect. All right, folks. Now, um, if Mark wants to just relax and place his hands in his 15s, or he can place them on his 25s, actually, if he wants, it's up to him. Wherever, wherever he feels he wants to receive um, some more universal energy, the rest of us, um, let's just place our hands, palms out, sixth depth relationship with the palms. We're going to have them palms out, and we're going to move toward Mark, who is an Aquarian, and uh, the gallbladder will be meaningful to him at certain levels and the whole understanding of Aquarius. And then just breathe out, let go, and allow yourself to receive the universal energy and allow it to go to Mark, who you can all see, I hope. Here we go.
Thank you, Terry. Thank you all. You're welcome. A, a definite clearing of my head and right away my palms began to just radiate a lot of energy and a lot of healing energy. I remember someone recently said that so much of our healing is empowered by our heart energy and that the heart energy goes down the arms and into the hands. So mm -hmm. if you're in that loving, kind, caring, compassionate mode that you're a more effective with your touch. So I felt that. So thank you. Oh, you're more than welcome and happy birthday Tuesday, right? Yeah. Seven oh. A big move. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Victory, perfect life power, right? Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, how are you doing? Yeah. Yay. Yeah, thank you for thank you for joining us um, and sharing the energy. We're all in this field together. And um, I will just mention that if any of you want to present, um, I'm going to ask Mark to present again at some time in the future. Sure. I've, you know, I've had um, a few people write to me since Muriel came on. And um, if any of you have stories you want to share, please, you, you can see the email in the chat room. Just drop me a line and uh, we'll fit the time in and, you know, you can come on and share. And um, it really helps, I feel, us to connect as a, a community, as a field, a Jinshin field, if you like. And uh, I know we've all got something that we can offer and share and serve others with. So don't hesitate. And if you're indecisive, <laughs> <laughs> to the call bladder flow <laughs> for three days <laughs> and see how you feel in your heart and then maybe drop me a line. All right, folks, enough from me. So um, the replay will be up within 24 to 48 hours. Um, the link um, came with the email, with the Zoom link and everything, and you can also um, go to the Jinjin Jitsu Facebook, no, YouTube page and see all the many months that went on before, um, if you want. And uh, thank you, Mark. Here we go to sixth depth, everyone. Um, bless you all. And um, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you. Yeah, you.